among the many works that have been inspired by your own work uh, are dozens of movie adaptations and probably dozens, probably hundreds, literally hundreds of uh, movies that have been not adapted directly but hugely inspired by your work. Uh, I'm curious, what, what are your favorites? Well, yes, Stuart Gordon has done some interesting things with my stories. Uh, I would have to say of all of his various ad adaptations, whether it's uh, from Beyond or the Animator, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids is probably the most truly deeply disturbed. <laughs> As for other filmmakers, really, I, I'm just waiting for Tyler Perry to come around to make my work. I think Medea's Dagon is an idea. <laughs> You had a lot of correspondence with a lot of um, soon-to-be authors, of people attempting to like, uh, make their way in the literary world. Who are you most surprised by the success of that? I was amazed by what happened with little Bobby Block. Bo Block, as we would call him. <laughs> the fact that his, his work, because I knew he was just a little fellow, and he managed to grow up to inspire a whole other terror in all manner of different genres. It was truly remarkable. So what I wasn't surprised at the success of, of course, was Derlin himself, Aldous Derlin, my rather dubious, posthumous collaborator. But when he first started writing to me, he was still in high school, and yet already he was writing just with a speed, with a ferociousness, which absolutely stunned me. I, I would be sitting with a story just languishing and wondering, do I want this to be a Rugos appendage? Do I want it to be a swayless one? Just <laughs> agonizing constantly. And he would have written five stories, sent them off, full of spelling errors, grammatical mistakes, whatever. He understood that after a while, just sheer pain count counts. And it was marvelous to see how he managed to work in all sorts of different genres. He, he wrote about life in Wisconsin, and he wrote about being an outdoorsman, and yes, he even wrote a great deal about my own particular monsters, having lifted them from my desk. But that's my own personal matter. He has ever reanimated, I'm sure we will have very long conversations. You probably already mentioned this, but uh, have you seen the franchise Stranger Things? Oh, uh, that's the one with the, the small children that get in all sorts of scrapes and whatnot. Uh, don't you feel that's an outright plagiarism of your writing? Uh, since no one refers to anything as Cyclopean or Eldritch, no, I think they're doing just fine. <laughs> the, the truth is, I am so amazed at how people have taken inspiration from my work, or taken inspiration from art that is inspired by my work. And, and Stranger, Things, Stranger Things is wonderful in many ways, but what I find so fascinating about it is how it manages to tap into that rich vein of nostalgia. There's nothing that people seem to love more than nostalgia, being reminded of your childhood, which, by my own childhood, was not a particularly pleasant time, but I suppose things have improved since then. Yeah, tell us a little bit about your childhood. My childhood, of course, was a, um, it was an, an odd mixed bag. I grew up uh, in a wealthy family. My, my mother's father, uh, little Van Buren Phillips, was a mountain of a man, a titan of industry. And as the years passed and the family wealth began to fall away, I had to juxtapose my understanding, my expectations for how life should be with what life very rapidly became. And as such, the thing that I was able to appreciate most of my childhood were the books, the stories. I would retreat into these wonderful worlds that other people had crafted for me and escape the seeming banality of modern life. And as our family was beset by more and more poverty, that desire to escape, that desire to find somewhere where I could be something more was even more key. My mother also put me in all sorts of strange outfits, but it's a whole other thing. <laughs> Everything that is written in the imaginary is real somewhere else on the parallel dimension of the third world. Uh, how do you feel about that uh, philosophy or that theory that anything that's written is real somewhere else? Yes, people make these uh, these comments quite a bit. Uh, a lot of people think, for some strange reason, that 
My works are not works of fiction. I have had numerous people wonder, where was the real Necronomicon? Where did you find it? Was, was it buried away in some old shore that disappeared as soon as you turned around again? But the truth of the matter is, I need it out. It's, it comes from here. That's where these, these books, or these ideas come from. I don't believe I was, I was channeling from some other dimension that my various monsters and creations are reflected out in the stars somewhere. I'm a writer. I'm a little insulted the idea that I'm some, some sort of copy editor. <laughs> so I may be some parallel universe where the Arbitrotep and the Shoggoths are banding about having all sorts of adventures. I'll, I'll stick with this one. 